Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to calibrate your scanner for sharpness. So if you've got a scanner like me, the Epson V800 is my scanner, and the chances are that you will have a holder like this. And these holders are common for all sorts of um, flatbed scanners. And with the Epson V800, um, they have these um, little height adjusters that you can move to adjust the height of the holder off the glass of the flatbed scanner. Um, so it's quite good to you know, calibrate your scanner so that you know that you're getting the best images, you know, the sharpest images you can. And I think this process is relevant to all flatbed scanners, um, even if you're using, you know, these factory supplied holders, or even if you're using like a third party holder like this one from betterscanning.com, um, which is used for wet mount scanning, and it has adjustable height. Um, you need to find a suitable height for your scanner. So you have to come up with a process um, to, to, you know, to calibrate the scanner, and that's what I've um, been working on today in this video. And I think this process is relevant for, you know, for even if you've got a dedicated film scanner like the Nikon um, 9000, Nikon Killscan 9000. Um, they don't have, I don't believe they have adjustable height, you know, film holders like these. I think the actual lenses within them can be adjusted, and I believe there is a, a way to calibrate them. Um, so today we're going to be going through and I'm going to talk you through the process of how we calibrate the scanner. Now there are going to be, um, there is something you're going to need. You're going to need a calibration chart like this one on my screen. This is a USAF 951, 1951 <coughs> sharpness calibration target and basically you will need to print that off on the biggest format you can. Um, I, I chose A3 and I printed that off as big as I could. And then I basically stuck it to a window um, in my house and I got my longest lens and I did this, I made this image on my Mimir 7. It doesn't really matter what camera you use. Um, ideally, just make sure you've got a telephoto lens so that you can maximize the size of the chart within the frame of your film. Um, and that's going to give you the best option, you know, the best results for making sure that you've got the biggest and most sharpest um, chart when you do the scan. So basically, yeah, you just stick it to a wall, you take an exposure of it, you might want to take more than one exposure so that if you're using a scanner like this, you know, you can put them, you could, you, you could take four images and you could put one in each corner and one in the middle so that you can, you know, get a true feel for the, um, the height of the, you know, the height and the sharpness of, of the holder. Um, I haven't used this yet, even though I've had it for a while. The problem with this is that I can't get the Aztec fluid in New Zealand, so I'm struggling to find a, a solution that I can wet map my film. So if you've got any suggestions, please leave a comment down below, and I would um, definitely be exploring that if you've got any suggestions. So my, you know, the, I, I use the, you know, the factory, the manufacturer supply holders. So I use this one, which is the medium format one, and I think one image one slide is enough, you could possibly do two, you know, because if there's an angle difference, then you could maybe set one end lower than the other end, for example. But anyway, I just did it with one, I think it works well. Um, so I basically took my image on um, using Velvia 50 quite a long time ago, and I've had this in, in storage for a while, and every now and again I pull it out and check the sharpness of my scanner, um, which is what I'm going to show you today. So. Let's get into it. I'm going to jump into the computer and we're going to walk you through step by step uh, the settings that I do and we're going to scan we're going to scan this holder in the um, in the five settings that it has. So it's, I'm able to move this up and down five you know, five settings. So yes, yeah, so there'll be five images created and then um, there'll be some settings applied in, in Silverfast, the software that I use. And then at the end we'll have five images and we'll review them and decide on which one we think is the sharpest. And that'll be the setting that I use for my film holder going forwards. So I just want to show you quickly how to get hold of a um, USAF 1951 PDF target, sharpness target, so that you can print it. So just go to Google and type in USAF 1951 um, target PDF. And then go to images 
and then go to tools and then you want to go to size and then go to large and then just pick on the just click on the first one you just right click and then just um, save image to your desktop and that's it and then you just print it off and and then um, print it on A3 and stick it somewhere on a window or in somewhere in your house somewhere there's some decent light and use a tripod with your camera um, so you get a really sharp image and then just take a an exposure with film take a few and then yeah once you get them developed then you've got them then in, in, and you can store them and you can use them whenever you need them okay so we're just going to load the film scanner holder into the scanner now we've got it set on position one which is the lowest height of this film holder okay so we have the film holder loaded into the scanner now we're going to set up Silverfast for the scan and the first thing we're just going to make sure is that the film type is selected to the type of film we're using and for me it's it's slide film so it's positive and the bit rate is 48 bits so we get the best out of the scanner for those of you interested in the colour management settings that I use this is what I'm using here for today I've got my um, input profile set up to camera RGB profile but Sometimes I will use a dedicated target that I've created from uh, Colorade and I've got a separate video for that and I'll link that so you can see it. Uh, so these are the settings that I use. So the first thing that we're going to do now is just give it the file a name. So USAF 1951 and then we'll say position 1 which is the lowest. There we go, then we'll save it to the desktop. Picture quality will remain at 300 pixels per inch, but we will move the resolution up to 2400 pixel per inch. We're going to delete the unsharp mask, and there's good reason for that. Basically, I want to be able to see the true output, the true sharpness of the, the lens in, in my scanner. And if I leave if I let the software apply sharpening to, to the scans, I may get a, a, you know, a different results with each scan. So, so I can get a true, true feel for sharpness each setting. I'm going to remove the sharpness setting. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do a pre-scan. So once the pre-scan is finished, we just align the scan area with the USAF chart. And then we zoom in for a more detailed scan. And we'll just adjust the borders a little bit. That'll do. And so now we're going to add a histogram and what we will do is bring the white point down to brighten up the image and just align it with the end of the white on the histogram scale and then we're going to go ahead and scan. Okay, so that's the first image scanned. I'm just going to adjust the position of the height of this the film holder up to the second position. Okay, that's that's been adjusted, and now we're going to change the file name to position two, and we'll just scan again. Okay, so I've just scanned the fourth image on position four, and we're now going to move on to position five, which is the final and highest position of the film holder. So we're just going to do that one quickly. Position five, highest, and then we're going to scan. Okay, 
Okay, that's the fifth image scanned, and we'll just jump to the desktop. And here we have the five images. So we're just going to open them up and see what we've got. There we go, we'll just full screen. I'm just going to make sure they're in order. So we're just going to move that one down there. So we've got one at the top, which was the lowest here. Got position two, position three, position four, position five. So this is position one, and I'm just paying attention to the edges of the of the numbers and the lines, and some of the smaller details just here and here. You know, it's even worth looking at the right in here as well, so you can get a feel for a different colour. So this is slide. This is position number two. Definitely, at a glance, feels sharp. If I just flick between those two, it definitely feels sharper to the eye, very slightly. So position two looks like to be the sharpest position so far. Just looking here in these finer details, it's quite hard to see with some of these areas because of the haloing effect. Okay, I'll move to position three now. Again, that just flicking between the two. And I'm looking at the number here on the top. It's position two, position three feels it looks, position three does look sharper to me. So I'm going to look here on the zero. It's marginal, it's hard to say from that. You know, looking down here on the, on the big right and if I flip between position two, so this is position two. And position three it does feel a little bit sharper to the eye, it does look a bit sharper. So I'm going to say position three at the minute is the sharpest. Then we go to position four. I'm just going to flick between the two. This is position three, position four. It's really hard to see the difference on this. Position three, position four, it's marginal. So we're going to move to position five just to get a feel for the difference between position four and position five. So this is position four. We're now on five. Position four. Position five. I think position four is sharper than position five. And I'm just looking again up here at this number two. So this is position four. And this is position five. The edges just look a little bit crisper on position four. Five, this is position five, so again we're just looking here now. This is position five. This is position four. It just kind of looks a bit sharper to me. Yeah, even with the writing down in the bottom here. This is position four. This is position five. Definitely four looks sharper. So it's I think it's between position three and position four. And maybe the answer is in between those two and that perhaps a scanner, you know, a film a film holder with finer adjustments, like the better scanning film holders might achieve an improvement over and above what we can do on the man on the fact on the manufacturer's holder. So this is position four. And this is position three. Yeah, it's very hard to say. I don't think that there's a difference between position three and position four. So I think it's a tie between position three and position four. I can't see a difference. So I think as long as my scan is set either on position three or position four, I think that with the holder that I'm using, I'm going to get the best results. Yeah, so position three and position four is what's suitable for my scanner. And I'll be using one or the other. It doesn't really matter, I think, going forward. So look, I really hope you found that useful and you've learned something and yeah, please leave a comment down below and let me know if you've got any feedback or if you've got any questions. Let me know how your um, scanner calibration for sharpness is going. Yeah, hopefully it was useful. I just want to show you something quickly. I've got a video coming out on the weekend. Um, I recently did some landscape photography local to me using black and white film with Ortho Plus, Ilford Ortho Plus and um, Ilford FP Plus, uh, FP4 Plus, sorry. And... Um, yeah, I was really impressed with the images. It was a very foggy day. 
and I'm going to talk, you know, go through the images when I make that video. But I just wanted just to show you just quickly on my screen here some of the images. I found these really gnarly trees, and the fog was really thick, and it was just awesome. And I was just, I just took so many images, and uh, yeah, really kind of impressed with the results. I haven't finished it. I haven't finished editing the images yet, but. Um, yeah, hopefully that video is going to come out on the weekend. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hope you found that useful. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.